Okay, welcome to another episode of Accountants of Sexy Change My Mind. This episode is something a little different to what we normally do because we normally talk to people who are heavily involved in the accounting space, be that accountants themselves or people who are perhaps in the tech side of accountancy. But this time, this time we're just going to talk about marketing and I'd like to welcome my ve- uh, my guest Vicky Jakes, who Hello. is... Hello, Vicky, um, who is an online marketer and has been in this realm for the past 20 years, leading a host of different people from website designers to copywriters to um, to teams of developers and all sorts in, in an agency and who now runs her own very special agency running ads via social. So did I butcher that, Vicky? I thought... I thought you did it very, very well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm, I'm glad you've dropped in my, my 20 years of experience there so we can really lay down from way. the beginning how old I am. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what I find now is there is no escaping it. No. Like, I am 42. That is my age. I cannot hide from it any longer. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm pretty okay with being in my 40s in this in this sort of uh, day and age that we're in um, because I I love keeping up with tech and it's like my number one hobby basically so I don't feel like I'm getting old or I'm behind in that realm at all although my my kids you know asking if I've seen a particular thing on Roblox or YouTube sometimes makes me feel a little bit grey around the edges so yeah well I tell you what did feel make me feel very old the other day is my son was asking me for advice on what clubs to go to (laughs) you're like what a tennis club or a chess club (laughs) I'll drop you off no 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 he meant Ministry of Sound (laughs) Uh, well you see Ministry of Sound is the first club I ever went to but that probably is not very cool now is it so I don't know do you know I don't know what clubs exist anymore it's a it's a whole new realm anyway Back to marketing. I promise them. I promise them marketing, and marketing is what we shall deliver. Exciting. So let's go back into your twenty years worth of experience. Yeah. Um, which is quite a lot in this space. So, do you want to go back to where you started and give us a give us an idea of where you come from? Yeah, sure. So, I um, <clears throat> I actually studied film at university. So my my aim was to be a digital. Well, <clears throat> it wasn't even a digital one. It was to be a video yeah. editor. Um because I really like graphic design and animation and chopping stuff up and things like that. But um, <clears throat> after university, I ended up doing a, a, a home learning course via Hammersmith Uni on how to build websites. And mm. um, I did that and, and just got really into it. So I started to learn how to code. And in the evenings, I would entertain myself online with my friends chatting on MSN, my developer friends. and. And then I'd make websites and I used making websites as a way to get in with bands in and around North London where uh, I come from and, um, you know, uh, trying to, you know, impress them by with, with a free website in order to get free entry to gigs and stuff. Um, but that in terms of... like living the dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but um, I, uh, you know, in, t- in terms of earning money, I, I, I did sales. So I worked for various mm-hmm. publishing companies and publishing houses. Um, and, you know, after a while they were like, oh, you're the techie one, aren't you? Do you want to come and work on the, we- the website as the website person? And that's sort of how I, I kind of got known, really. So mm-hmm. my, um, my kind of career started there and just slowly moved through publishing. I, you know, I was lucky enough to work at um, EMAP back when it was EMAP, you know, we sort of published Heat and FHM and sort of oversaw Kiss Radio and Kerrang and stuff. So we got to work on like, some really cool projects internally there for advertisers mm. um, as a project lead. And then, you know, slowly moved into the agency world. And um, I'm very much a gem- what's known as a generalist. So I can sell, I can um build I can do a bit of design I can write copy I just yeah. I, what I'm good is being in the middle of lots of artisans and be able being able to communicate with a client effectively so that yeah. that's kind of what led me to move up quite quickly in the agency world after a couple of stints at various 
um, agencies around the world. Like I worked in London, obviously, and in Australia. And, and when I got back from Oz, um, I started out a little startup healthcare marketing agency, got put on the board. Eight of us when I started, there were 120 of us when we left. So I really like learned, mm-hmm. learned my trade um, working there over kind of seven years, working with massive pharma companies who wanted um, cu- cutting edge digital projects that their mm-hmm. big network agencies couldn't do delivered by kind of little agile companies like us and um we used to work on building you know websites and microsites and stuff um driving traffic to them using you know pay-per-click and and kind of facebook ads as well um in a way that they you know they couldn't rely on the big network agencies doing big tv and radio campaigns above the line stuff yeah um and you know now like as i kind of left that world like five years ago to have babies and went out on my own um, you know, you know, now like a big company wouldn't think twice about having someone dedicated on, on Facebook and Twitter and things like that. But, you know, 10, 12, 14 years ago, that was, that was definitely unheard of. I remember being in like a massive three hour meeting with a pharma, uh, uh, company brand manager trying to explain to them what Facebook was and why it's important yeah. for their over the counter brand to have a Facebook page. And, you know, now that's, no one even thinks about that. Um, yeah. But yeah, like I said, I, I sort of went out on my own a few years ago, and that's kind of led me led me to where I am now, essentially. So it's it's been like a really long, fun, interesting career, <laughs> definitely. It's changed so much. I mean, I have been in sales for over twenty years, so maybe pushing on twenty five years. I've been in either sales or a marketing role. Um, and just the way that communication has changed has, has been dramatic. I mean, you've mentioned loads of things there that don't exist anymore or are not, or not particularly relevant, like MSN. Yeah. That's how I learned how to um, create a smiley face. Yeah. You know, before emojis, <laughs> like before you could really click on them, I had to do all the short codes. In my, in my first ever sales job in London, I worked for a photographic agency in Soho and all I had was my phone and a notepad and then like maybe twice a week I could go to the internal database and do mm. one of those dot, dot matrix printer printouts of all the, yep. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, all of the names and addresses. <laughs> and um, I remember having a team a few years later who were complaining about their Mac not being like the latest version or whatever. And I remember like <laughs> ranting to them saying, well, in my day, we and they, it blew yeah. their mind. They were like, well, did you get a mobile phone? And I was like, no like that wasn't a thing we yeah. had the phone and, <laughs> and then we had our a to z to find the address but anyway yeah <laughs> and we couldn't go more than like a, a meter away from the desk <laughs> yeah yeah and if you got lost you have to find a you know a, a call box and call the office and ask them yeah, to, yeah. anyway but like fun <laughs> times <laughs> but okay, like so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say that i'm not aging you anymore you're definitely doing that yourself <laughs> Yeah, fair play. Yeah, it, it, I think marketing has been a real, a real journey. So when I when I was first starting out, I started creating Facebook pages for a recruitment company. The recruitment company had had it banned at server level. I remember having to go in via Hootsuite in order to post because they didn't block Hootsuite, but they blocked Facebook. So I was a bit sneaky like that. But um, I eventually got sacked for it because they couldn't see the value. This is a recruitment company. I set up a Facebook page, a Facebook group, and a LinkedIn page. They couldn't see the value in it. Yeah, that's Absolutely mind, mind nuts. Same, same for Big Pharma, you know, and um, I, I, I feel like some of the best um, wins that I had working at the, the mid-sized level indie that I, I was talking about was when we would go into the legal departments and um, the operation departments in you know, big corporations like that and be able to turn them around and find a way that they could approve mm. um, marketing channels like Facebook or mm. even like, get this, so to approve a website in a, a big pharma company like 14 years ago, you had to um, print out every single screenshot of the website and then put it into a binded document. And then every single member of the legal team had to have one of those documents. It would get marked up. With and red then pen. They would, 
<laughs> yeah, and then they would have to pass that round to each other. Um, because it, this stuff's really important, like in all seriousness, like, you know, if if they mess up, if they put the wrong marketing message mm. out, they can have licenses revoked, get fined tens yeah, yeah. and tens of millions of pounds, right? So, you know, it's really important to get it right. But quite often that would just lead to websites just going into approval hell. And I remember one website we worked on, it mm. was in approval for six, seven months. And by the time it had come out of approval, the whole point of doing the website had passed. You know, it, it was yeah. for a, um, a heart condition awareness campaign. And so, you know, that brand manager had spent like £50,000 on that project and it just gone down the train. Um, so we, we worked really closely with the business after that to find more interactive, engaging uh, ways to, to kind of help teams like that approve stuff much quicker. And, you know, it just goes to show like even the driest, most corporate dusty corners of the world can, you know, be revamped. Um, mm. and kind of have their ways of working changed and you know we're, we're in 2023 now you know we wouldn't think twice about approving something online using a pdf markup tool you know, s s you know securely exchanging documents via vpn you know especially in this kind of like post-covid world where yeah. working from home is the norm but yeah not not all those years ago yeah i think um the accountants listening are gonna see parallels and I see parallels between the accounting space and marketing space all the time because we're both technology rich like industries now so the collaboration between technology and the ease that you can work like accountants can work anywhere in the world just like we have the luxury to do that ourselves you can pick up your laptop literally go and plug it in somewhere else I'm saying that, but I do like to have a second screen, so I typically stay at my desk. <laughs> well, the, 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 the thing with, um, like one of the clients we used to work with was FinTech, right? Um, mm. Was in FinTech. And um, that, that world just had a, a crazy amount of technological, Te technological advancement yeah you know kind of from 2014 onwards really um and that's definitely not a world like finance is definitely not a world i would consider as slow as farm you know the farmer world in terms of where they're at with them their marketing um mm. and you know th I, I think it's it, it you know it's an industry that could have been like that it could have really especially in the uk it could have really stayed like super over heavily regulated but there were some real mavens out there trying to um you know uh tr trying to push the envelope as it were um mm. and i think it's if you are like us from an older older way of working it's easy to kind of think Ah, these things are not for me I'll just stick with what was good kind of like 15 years ago well you only have to look at your own industry to see it's like you know cutting edge really and you, you, yeah you know, you've got I had that permission um, to follow suit I, I responded to somebody only today on LinkedIn and they said well do accountants need to do marketing you know because I get tons of referrals and my business is okay and I'm like well <laughs> that's fine if your business is growing with the business that you want, if it's if you're attracting the right clients, you know, if you've got control of any of that, then fine, if that can be for you. But if you're not growing, if you don't have the right clients, if you if you are struggling to with your processes and you need to attract more of a certain type of client, then you do you do need to market. You can't just rely on other people handing you stuff because you don't know what they're going to hand you, how frequently or when it's going to dry up. Yeah, um, uh, 100%. Like a, a business model built on referrals is only good if you can guarantee that number of referrals, you yeah. know, if you've got a referral program running, for example. Um, but yeah, that, but even that kind those of, with a referral program don't rely on it. That's a, that's secondary. Yeah, totally. Totally. And to your point as well, if you are wanting to niche down and find specific types of business, mm. well, you're not going to find all of the the flower businesses in your town are going to want to work with you, you know, yeah. so you might have to reach out and go to other towns. Well, where's your network then, you know, exactly. and if you're in a position where you want to work worldwide, um, you know, th that's incredibly difficult to kind of build that network. So yeah, I, I do feel mm -hmm. like marketing is more important than ever, even for businesses that have relied on referrals in the past. And we, as we've sort of seen with like COVID, you know, things can change very quickly and dramatically and yeah. to have been able to rely on a steady stream of kind of leads coming in from marketing during a time when perhaps people weren't going out and networking and refer mm -hmm. like referring you know i'm sure would have been really helpful for a lot of businesses that rely on it mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, I, it was a scary time, really. It was a scary time for anyone who had a local business that, that purely focused on referral marketing from things like B&I, because whilst they did carry on online and some people were hugely successful, actually a lot of the networking were private conversations. It was taking your online marketing and delivering what we, we would call social selling. So building up that network of connections, having these discussions, not forcing your products down their throats in private messages <laughs> necessarily, but just opening up these conversations. And that wasn't necessarily natural to a lot of people. That felt weird, didn't it? Yeah, and I, I think that's because there's still this association with sales and marketing that is mm. like an ick thing. You know, it's something that pushy, annoying people do. And actually it's part of creating the, the rev, you know, the top of the, the funnel of, uh, of revenue for your business. Um, you, you, I, I think that business model where you go to local business meetup and events will rely on two things. One, a new business who might need an accountant who hasn't got one yet, right? Or, or people looking to switch. And so you're, you're constantly being on the lookout for those two types of state. Um, well, wouldn't it be easier if someone just thought of you because they'd seen your branding or remembered your name? And it, mm. it makes having to go out and have those individual conversations much more scalable. Um, yeah. You know, especially if you're just on your own or with a small team. You know, mar marketing is a must then because you can't wear all the hats all at once. You can't do the work do the sales and marketing, do yeah. your own finance, do your own team management and all the things at the same time. Mm. So. And the other thing that they probably don't take into consideration is that you need an established business, an established pipeline of referrals before that can become a thing. Yeah. So if you're not considering marketing as a smaller firm, they're like, what, what? You need to. <laughs> Yeah, Period. brand brand just goes a long way. Like, and brand being like the the look and feel or the name that's associated with a business. I mean, you know, I I say Abercrombie and Fitch to you. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I say Coca Cola. Yeah, I you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I say Coca Cola. You know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, um, I, I can say QuickBooks to this audience, mm. and you know exactly what I'm talking about. It, they're just two words that are together. It's a business yeah. name, but it's it's um that that can that can be anyone listening to the you know to this episode right now is that someone could could use your name ubiquitously like that in your yeah. own community it's just a matter of being able to be remember like be memorable and to to kind of stick out amongst a, your competition um yeah. and that's and your core <laughs> message they yeah. need to know who you are and what what it is you do and who you do it for yeah but you can't be bland right Kelly, you can't like do the same thing that everyone else is doing. So there has Pardon, to be. You can't say that I'm an accountant, therefore you should come to me because I'm an accountant. <laughs> yeah. <What? laughs> well, you know, th there's some there's some exceptions, right, in this world. And I'm going to say like a plumber is one of them. I don't care if my plumber is called Dave, Joan, Mick, yeah. whatever. I, you know, I kind of don't care what they charge when there's an emergency happening in my house, right? Mm -hmm. All I care about is that that person can come to my house now because my house yeah. is flooding, right? So, you know, there are some exceptions, locksmith being another one, right? Um, that, that type of thing. But um, I, I think for an accountant, you know, it's a people business, it's a relationship business. Yeah. Um, you know, you pe pe people will, um, and it's a trust business as well. So, you know, people can choose who they want to work with. And, you have to go through and, and kind of do that 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 swiping that yeah. um that kind of <laughs> swipe left <laughs> yeah that swipe left like that kind of you know um dating to find the right one kiss a few frogs yeah. and all of that and, I just want to mm. make a point that with the with the with the plumbers and the locksmiths the intent is so different of course. so when you are searching for those specific services you are searching for something really like i need a plumber to fix this i need a plumber to fix my heating i need a plumber to like plumb in my bath you know so they're very specific searches when you're searching for an accountant most people don't actually know what they're searching for totally so they are tr either trying to find a, a, a solution to a problem or a piece of information that they think they're missing or 
or you've come into their world and they remember that you can fix the problem because you've been talking about about it in your social. Yeah, you seem knowledgeable or you've had a nice testimonial mm. that I remember or you stand out. Yeah. You know, um, there's, um, there's an insurance company who um, in their marketing, they, what are they called? They're called Dead Something. Um, oh, and, Simply Dead? Yeah, Simply Dead, right? And um, See, they, I knew that. <laughs> and like, uh, oh, they're called Dead Happy. That's right, Dead, Dead Happy. Happy. Yeah. Although you, there might be another one called Simply Dead, right? But um, but they they stood out for me because they had really amazing uh, Facebook ads that were targeted mm -hmm. at me as a woman between like thirty five and fifty five, and I could see that behind the ads. I could find out yeah. that information, um, and they were funny. There were funny ads about dying, which you yeah. don't see in this country. We don't talk about death. So number one, that stood out to me. Number two, it was done in a way that was aimed at a woman, like the messaging, you know, was like female led and there were mm. women. In and the I ads. think if I remember, they had a skull and crossbones logo, which, you know, I'm correct. all for. <laughs> yeah, correct. <laughs> but also, you know, for me, I, you know, we're very similar in many ways, you and I, right? Because, you know, I, I love... I love the lippy look, dark hair. Yeah. I'm a bit gothy in my pics and things like that. I've got definitely like a a look that some people in my community like identify with, you know, mm. and it just takes like a the right image, the right words, the the kind of combination of videos, looks, feels uh, to kind of find that that flavor of person that wants to work with you and that's what kind of dead dead happy had done done with me. Yeah. And I could have spent a long time looking for insurance. I didn't even know I wanted insurance until yeah. I saw their ad. And, and that's the power of branding and, and kind of standing out online. And mm. now I've just recalled that name to you and I knew it had dead in it. And it took me mm. a very quick Google search to go and find them. And then I could tell you about that business anyway. Yeah. Right? And that's super powerful. If you can get that recall, from people who've seen your brand name who've seen your business name online you don't have to spend money finding them <laughs> you yeah. don't have to spend money talking about yourself over and over and over because they will go out and do that work for you mm. uh, and again it just comes back to you know what, what would you rather like going out to endless in-person network meetings around your town you know breakfast with the rubbish bacon roll or whatever or do you want do you want to who um, and there might be people there looking to change accountants there might not someone might yeah. know someone maybe if you swap business cards or do you want someone to recall your your accountant business you know accountancy yeah. business name um and i do you think that there, there is a difference to going to a general networking event and going to somewhere like bni i actually got on really well with bni because, sure, because they've they've got like an outcome, right? So you have to refer yeah. each other, don't you? Yeah, I recall. Yeah, but saying that, I don't want to get up in the mornings anymore. That it's not for me. I'm not having it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, and, if and you can find people online, it's it's so much easier, you know, mm. because the 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 effort is is lower and it's scalable. I mean, yeah. I can I can find with Facebook ads in the in the business to business space leads for as low cost as two quid. Right. So if you're willing to spend two pound on procuring like a sometimes even as low as one quid. Right. But um, but if you're willing to spend one to two quid on procuring a name and an email of someone who's willing to hear from from you in your business online, I would rather pay for that than spend those hours. I could probably I, I think if you look at the economics of it, it would probably make more sense to do it that way. So talk to me then, because predominantly Facebook over the years, like the social, um, the organic kind of growth, I'm not saying it's not possible because for some people it is possible, but it's certainly declined, like falling off a cliff rapidly. So, so the, the advertising side, does that now supplement, supplement your, your growth on Facebook as well as it should? Yeah, so the it's interesting what you say about the organic side because this is going way back in the, in in the uh, histories of the internet again, isn't it? Because it was sort of around, I don't know, when would you say, like 2012, that Facebook pages were everything. It yeah. was the main way to market online because there was Mainly so many... about eight years ago, eight, eight to nine years ago. I think um, I fucking love science is about yeah. nine years old. So that was like 
the massive the Facebook it? page. Yeah, absolutely yeah. massive that one. And because all of our attention was on Facebook back then, all yeah. of us, including kids as well, like younger people. Um, uh, you know, we weren't on TikTok. Instagram was just just a, a newbie back then, and um, Facebook didn't want us talking about our businesses on our personal profile, so it created pages and mm. businesses became overnight successes because of the reach of those pages. And I think yeah. a lot of us from the old days of the internet are sort of still stuck in that that kind of old way of thinking where we think, especially a lot of small business think this, well, I'll just get a Facebook page and then I'll post to my Facebook page and then they'll and come. And then everyone will turn up. Yeah, if, if I build it, <laughs> they will come without kind of realising that, you know, you're only... <laughs> you're only posting to people who are on Facebook. So if your audience isn't on Facebook, then, you know, so anyone like listening to this, if if you only want to work with cool, funky, creative agencies, for example, are they going to be on Facebook or, you know, are they going to be on TikTok now or whatever, right? So you sort of have to yeah. think about that. Um, but the, the reach was incredible. So you can still see why people still kind of are in that mindset. But then, yeah, overnight, the the reach was capped uh, so that Facebook could promote its paid ad product, mm. and now if you're running a Facebook page, and you c you can convince pay people to like your Facebook page. I mean, think about your behaviour. When what was the last Facebook page you liked or followed? Mm. It's followed now, right? Um, less than ten percent of the users who who follow a Facebook page are gonna see that page's posts. Mm -hmm. Um just because of how you know Facebook's kind of capped organic reach. So if you do want to reach people on a massive platform like Facebook, the the, the main way to do it is, you know, by by paying to play, by using their, their ads product essentially. Um, and I, th I think you can do both things side by side. I think you can still maintain and grow a good Facebook page presence, mm. um, depending on the audience that you want to reach. You know, Facebook is slightly older, it's skewed, slightly older man, woman, um, very community focused. So lots of interest groups on there. Um, mm. I, I would I would say you could probably find most people on Facebook yeah. genuinely um, based on the interest um, the interests and the, the kind of graph that Facebook have set up to kind of define all of us anonymously. Um, there's some people slightly harder to find than others. There's some really broad groups to find. So you have to work hard in the ad creative that, that mm -hmm. you kind of put out there to call out to those users as well. But it's a booming industry, it ain't going anywhere. Facebook's, you know, slightly down on their earnings, but looking like they're bouncing back up again. And that's all from their ad products. So, um, and that covers Instagram as well. Mm. So um, it's not it's not just Facebook; it's across both platforms. And what is it? What's the difference then between business to business advertising and business to consumer? Because the consumer, especially on Instagram, is phenomenal because yeah. they can do the in-app purchases, and you know they've got the links in there, and it's really cool. Um, and I find myself looking at a lot of stuff from Facebook, like I'm constantly oh this gadget you know yeah, yeah. so I get the consumer side the business to business what's the difference what was the last impulse purchase but, you bought on Facebook by the way <laughs> because that's what you're talking about because that's what's yeah. great great for Facebook ads it's like yeah I'm trying to think now purchase. I think it was some t-shirts that I haven't yet given my husband <laughs> uh, I, I bought this notebook here it's like it's called my list of things I was right about by by a business who I've seen yeah. those yeah and, and yeah. they kind of write offensive this is all covers. the ways i'm going to kill people <laughs> yeah yeah all the bodies i buried in the woods is another one <laughs> that was a total facebook purchase but with with business um the assumption is look i'm an accountant i'm looking for um bricks and mortar businesses they're not on facebook well, hard disagree hard disagree if they've got kids chances are they're in a parent group on Facebook, yeah. right? If they like fishing, chances are they follow a couple of fishing pages and they're in a big fishing community group. Like Mark Zuckerberg, you know, had, had said in a keynote, um, uh, the kind of Facebook annual conference a few years ago that communities were going to take over and, and they have. Like yeah. you might not be 
posting it on your feed anymore or using Facebook to look at friends, kids or their holiday snaps or anything. Like I myself have unfollowed everybody on Facebook. And the only thing that shows up in my feed are the groups um, that I'm part of. And so I've cu- I've curated Facebook to to be about the groups, and I'm in like a ton of business groups, yeah. And um, because of that, I am targetable by ads, right? Um, and I get targeted very heavily by people looking to target agency owners, <laughs> people yeah. looking to target people who work in Facebook ads. Um, so you know, I would say if you were only working with say bricks and mortar businesses like a florist. Well, that florist is probably going to be interested in other florists, you yeah. know. And if you were only working with um, insurance companies, well, chances are that insurance person either works for, let's say, legal in general, so they're going to have that in their profile. Well, you can target massive businesses, like mm. and the employees of those big businesses, in them um, in the targeting options in Facebook ads, or you could target people who identify as a manager you know, or as a director, um, you can target people by location, you can target people um, based on brands that they like as well. Like, it, it becomes less about like that real obvious way of marketing, you know, mm. well, if I put it on a bus stop, 5000 people walk past this bus stop today, a small percentage of those might like my thing. And it, it yeah. really and, and an even smaller percentage might have the time to actually go and do something about it when right. they see it, the rest have forgotten. Right. Uh, whereas with with what you can do, the potential in Facebook ads is find one of these interest groups. And if you can't quite find one that suits you, then you can get really creative about the mm. type of thing that your ideal customer would be interested in. You know, so if you're an accountant only working with businesses turning over a million quid, well, guess what? There's an audience in Facebook ads that allows you to target businesses turning over more than a million a year if you're working if you want to work with a business who's turning over five ten million a year and you want to you know go straight to the ceo well ceos play golf they do cycling now that's the new golf isn't it you know uh road cycling yeah yeah paddle boarding (laughs) yeah there's quite a few of those down here in brighton and home um you know they're they're gonna buy apple watches um they're gonna go on certain holidays da 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 and you can build up this profile and then target people who are interested in those particular things and mm. then call out really clearly in your ad what it is you want them to do. And mm. I think the best um, Facebook ads in the kind of business to business sense don't necessarily say, hey, can you come and buy from me? Hi, business, other business come buy from me. Instead, yeah. you, you have to have a couple of steps in front of um, that tricky conversation first. Um, which kind of makes it easier for the people who maybe might have seen marketing and sales as a bit ick before, right? Is that um, you offer knowledge. Hey, I've got a great podcast episode for you about, um, you know, managing a team of 30 um, and making sure your payroll stays correct, right? Or I've got this really great guide for businesses looking to scale up their, you know, their R&D tax Mm-hmm. We, you know, I love the um, lingo. Research. I'm, I'm just trying to. I'm just. I'm trying to make it on brand for you. Um, you know, but like, th- there's just something valuable that hooks that user in yeah. to say, "Hey, you know what? This is the first step of me hearing about your business, and it's really interesting. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to find out more." Um, mm. y- you know, you could get a monocle. Like, you could hopefully find that person who is ready to buy from you. But chances are on Facebook, they're not. They're mm. not ready to buy from you. They're not ready to work with another business. The case in point of dead happy earlier, where well, I, I wasn't in a place where I was going to buy insurance, but now I might be yeah. <laughs> once I've seen that message. So um, there, there is a ton of there is a ton of potential, I think, um, on Facebook. And e- even if you think, no, it's not for me, I, I bet you could collect leads at the very least and get those emails mm. into a list and then do something with the emails on that list rather than yeah. selling directly from an ad. Um, and that's what we do a lot of at the Social Ad Squad is lead generation for businesses. That freaks a, a lot of people out. I think I think a lot of the time people think that ads act in the same way like a tap. So you turn it on, you turn it off turn it on and leads come out and you turn it off 
you know, and they stop and they see it very transactional where actually it's just the beginning of you nurturing them. You know, yeah. it could turn into some of them will turn into instant business. Some, if you hit the nails on the, all of the heads and you actually, you know, you nail it. But a lot of the time in most marketing, it's attracting them in, educating them and then helping them through that process. And I think it really freaks people out, especially because the difference between like organic and ads is money. They're like one of them's got time, one of them's got money. Yeah. They well, feel that money should all have an instant ROI and it really, it doesn't. Totally, like the, the, there's the same amount of touch points. What I, I, it's, it's the, uh, the Salesforce guy um, had said like there's what, 10, 11 touch points before someone decides. I think it keeps it. growing because yeah. of our attention spans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But um, in our real world life experience someone walks past a bus stop they see your ad they go oh yeah i remember that company mm -hmm. then two months later they might be sat at their desk and they might google you and then they'll see you pop up again well that's two touch points and then you know you might see the ad pop up online and that's three touch points it, like mm -hmm. it just it it takes a, a long time for mm -hmm. that kind of organic approach to happen whereas you you could quickly find them based on their interest mm -hmm. Um, and their behavior with ads and, and kind of move that process along quickly and then, you know, use that follow up, whether it's through ads. It's a little trickier to retarget people than it used to be since um, Apple and Facebook oh, yeah. had a big beef from falling out. So you can't tr rightly so, I, I, I believe that you can't track users based on their um, their kind of IP address so mm. easily anymore. It just leads to more creative, creative ways of finding it. But um you um you yeah you you kind of have to use ads and emails and and follow-ups i mean what's the lifetime value of a customer in the accountancy world you know it could be 20 years of finding the right accountant yeah. you know it's a big watch of cash you'd be willing to pay five quid for that lead at the beginning of that entire process yeah. if you knew that person was going to result in like the lifetime value that they were going to be. And I think that that's the mindset that you kind of have to put against spending. Yeah, ads. that sparks a whole other issue. And I'm sure that you've come across this as much as I've come across this, which is ideal clients. What the fuck? You know, they people get so worried and so nervous about pinning them down. Well, that's the beauty of ads is that you can test this stuff really quickly. Like you can move from sector to sector to sector to see if they'll resonate with your message. Mm. I mean, at the beginning of the marketing process, based on some of the information that you might have, real world information, qualitative, quantitative data that you might have, you might say, you know what, we're only going to work with fishmongers or whatever, right? And you create messaging and you put it out there. And you know what, the fishmongers don't want to work with you. And there could mm. be a whole bunch of reasons why. Um, you can find that stuff out within a couple of weeks with ads, yeah. you know, whether you're getting clicks, interaction and time spent on your site, whether you're getting the lead that you're looking for or the phone calls. Right. Mm. Um, and great. Fishmonger is not for you. Then move on to Fisherman. Maybe you got it slightly wrong and it's like a slightly <laughs> different variation yeah. of that market that you want to work with. I love but, all these markets that you're tapping into. We've got like florists and fishmongers. This is the beauty. You can you can target all of these people. I think like Facebook's got, I, I want to say, I'm, I'm going to get this wrong, but it's in the billions of daily active users, right? Mm. So, um, the, you know, there's so much data about um everybody anonymous data um so yeah it's two it's two billion i thought i was going to get that wrong well um done. yes two billion number of facebook users in the world <laughs> oh my goodness that's quite a lot of people right yeah. so there's there's a lot of data out there um and yeah you you know i, I would challenge anyone to not be able to find a certain sector mm. i do i find it funny when people say to me but my audience isn't there uh, like going back to what you were saying earlier and you're like yeah. okay well if you really really truly believe that it's not there then why are you even bothering <laughs> like like the, the one I, the one I hear quite a lot is like if you're trying to aim at CEOs while well, CEOs yeah. aren't on Facebook or again we've talked about the I bet they've bought a Peloton or you know they're in a rock and roll group Facebook group or something but anyway that <laughs> aside well who's like their executive team they're going to be there who are slightly lower down, you know, um, mm -hmm. they, you know, they're like, 
their wife might be like there's there's definitely like ways to creative yeah. ways to find the, the people that you need and that comes through the messaging that you CEOs still take their kids to Disneyland and they still yeah. want to tell the world yeah 100% people still want to mindlessly scroll videos yeah. and posts um as a as a way of winding down and you know we're, yeah. we're talking about how to kind of get in front of them I mean you know that said though like LinkedIn still is a really good ads option if you're absolutely positive you can't find your people on Facebook mm -hmm. but their cost per acquisition uh, for leads is just much higher you know it's almost yeah. like two or three times the cost but it's much more targeted you can target by job title over on LinkedIn so mm. see I, I don't particularly get involved in ads at the moment I haven't done for a couple of years now but that's the same story as I was telling when I was involved in it. Like yeah. the acquisition cost on LinkedIn was sky high. Yeah, it's massive. And actually, I'd rather find a slightly more diluted lead for a lower cost on Facebook, um, knowing that if I get a set amount of those leads, I'd be, I, I'd be able to convert a particular percentage. And th yeah. this is like the, the idea behind running ads to acquire leads on Facebook is you need to get a funnel running where you know okay for every 100 people um who sign up to the list I know that three percent of those are going to buy from us or you know that would be amazing it's probably going to be one percent right but mm. if you could get to that place where you know like that's what's going to happen then it makes it so much easier to put the cash in at the top and kind of get over the, the sort of money mindset issues about yeah. giving giving money to Mark or, or whatever. So but he's got a new baby on the way, you know, he's gonna... <laughs> I know it's it's hard hard times at, at Menlo time. Park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um oh I'm, we're gonna need to round this off in a second, but oh. could you give um a account the accountants out there like how much does it cost to get involved in ads do they need to throw a thousand pounds at it could it be done at a lower budget is it what what is it you know where are the barriers to this well facebook have created a system that ha shouldn't have many barriers like every facebook user has the ability to run ads on a personal profile right mm -hmm. um but you you need to go and set up the Facebook business manager. It's business.facebook.com. And oh, then we connect love that your, place. Yeah, and connect your Facebook page and your Instagram mm. with that place. Yes, we were talking about, we're slagging it off on Twitter, aren't we, recently? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then you, you can start running ads from within there. And if you're doing it on your own and you're going to have a little play, then I'd highly recommend spending five quid a day per audience running testing at least two or three different ads in that audience to see what mm -hmm. happens basically um and the, i think what a lot of businesses uh who are kind of new to ads who are doing diy and running themselves forget is that you don't just have to run one ad to one audience and see what happens because inevitably you're going to come back and go didn't work like you've got this amazingly complex sophisticated piece of kit in front of you mm -hmm that allows you to multi-test, uh, to test multi-images and multi-audiences against one another, and then it will mm. go and bid on your behalf against all of the other millions of advertisers out there um, and try and get your ads in front of as many people as possible. It does a really good job of it as well. Mm. It does optimize well. Like, So you could set an interest an audience, you know, of people that you want to target, set five quid a day, run maybe four different ad creatives to those people and test which ad creative those people like you know try mm -hmm. different things pictures of you pictures of the team pictures of the building maybe the the podcast episode you want to showcase or the white paper or the new blog post or, or whatever the value bomb that you're going to yeah. give to them you, you can't just you, you can't just do one thing to one audience and then come back 30 days later and say it didn't work for me how yeah, many facebook ads are rubbish <laughs> Yeah, I didn't, didn't work for me. Like, how many audiences did you test? Yeah. What creative, what words did resonate with them? And if you are a natural experimenter and tester, which is why I'm doing this now, you know, mm. lifelong goal to basically sit and get to play with right. images and text all day, basically. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, 
a, you know, and optimize. So mm. bring forward the images, the text, the audiences that work really well. You can then scale those up and mm. then, you know, leave it running. Um, so you, you don't have to start with a massive budget. You know, if you can set aside, you know, a couple of hundred quid for a test um, and see what happens, then mm. that, that's enough. Um some mistakes a lot of small businesses make when they're starting is they don't aim at just the UK. Don't forget that they don't split tests by men and women. We, you know, yeah. sorry, we do respond to ads differently, um, mm -hmm. and um, they they don't test warmer audiences as well. So you can create custom mm -hmm. audiences based on people who follow your Facebook page. Mm -hmm. You can upload an email list if people are given their permission um, to target, and you can target people based on your Instagram following as well, amongst a whole bunch of other custom audiences. So um, yeah, if you can do a combination of warm and warm audience and cold, as in people who've never heard of you before yeah. testing, um, that would work really well as well. And then, you know, the kind of golden rule of testing is, um, you know, just test one thing at a time. <laughs> you don't have to do 20 things all at once. Um, yeah. Test one thing at a time and then, you know, make incremental improvements as you go. Mm. I think it was in that it was really interesting about the men and women do behave differently now yes there is a gender issue a larger gender issue at play there but it's still very relevant when it comes to your advertising I remember I was running ads for a law firm and the conversions I think the I'm trying to recall it from memory but I think the men were coming back like three or four or five different times to the same page, they return to that same page. The women would make their decision with like one or tw twice, once or twice, right. they would visit the page, then they would convert. Men, they would keep coming back to the page. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Okay, now I'm right. That, I mean, that's so around. Well, in the, in the B2C space, in the consumer space, um, the shopping patterns that I found are that um, women will go and browse and not make yeah. that decision um and men men will know what they like and go and buy it so yeah. you know like so from the, the kind of other side of it the kind of impulse purchase side of it um we behave <laughs> we behave yeah. differently because you know women want to make sure like have they compared and contrasted maybe if they're buying they looked at the right price you know doing their due diligence and everything when yeah. it comes to product buying where, looking at the reviews taking it off yeah line, all of that it. yeah and you, you you know you do have to be a bit of an amateur psychologist and put your yourself into your ideal customer's shoes you know mm. um when you're running ads and again if you love doing that if you love to find mm. out about your customers and really get under their skin then it's just a really fun way of reaching them and and talking to them about your business <laughs> yeah. um compared to compared to going out and you know hit, hitting the hitting the streets at the old networking events yeah. i feel like i've <laughs> done them a disservice networking events but I'm <laughs> I'm they, they are not bad <laughs> but you you need to use them for the right reasons yeah. um we have to wrap up now because i'm definitely well over time it's usually half an hour but i really enjoy Ooh, talking to you. <laughs> oh it's been so much fun thank you but there is there is one more question there is a, a question i ask every every guest what is the sexiest thing about accountants? How the sexiest thing about accountants is how easy they make my life when it comes to tax chat. <laughs> that is the <laughs> sexiest thing. I do. I mean, if, if, if that's the correct word, I think. Yeah, I, no, I'm I, with you. I'm with you. They they take pressure off of me. They make tax sound sexy, and <laughs> that is that is amazing. And I salute all of the accountants out there who can do that. Very good. And um, before I let you go, if people are wanting to know a bit more about you, where should they go? Oh, come and come and find me over on um, LinkedIn um and um twitter as well you can find me on twitter under hey vicky jakes um i'm always chatting on there and um my dms are open for for hellos and questions about ads and um yeah i'm 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 very i'm i'm very amenable to to kind of people asking questions and getting help online i love to hear from people so no oh. 
Well, I, I definitely back her, back Vicky up. If you've got any questions about advertising, especially on social, then go and get in touch with her. Um, and don't forget to check out her agency as well, which is the Social Agency Squad. Am I getting that right? Is that in the right order? It's the the Social Ad Squad. Yes. Social, or, yeah, there we go. <laughs> the Social Ad Squad, or we social. call it. We call it SAS internally, but yeah, the social ad squad. Yeah, go go and Google us um, and go and, go and check us out. We're um, we're a big fun agency brand, and uh, we love to hear from accountants. So <laughs> fantastic! Right, it's been an absolute pleasure. So thank you ever so much. Thanks for having me. It's been really fun. <laughs>